Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, we are editing a Vivaldi violin concerto every day to raise awareness for uh, all the musicians of Blas Serenissima who have lost all their work uh, due to COVID-19. Um, so if you're feeling generous, uh, if you just won the lottery, can you make this a donation, please? Thank you very much. Uh, as global giving, I'm sure the information will be somewhere on the screen. Um, so, uh, yesterday we were looking at uh, the uh, Varna Concerto in F major, RV283, um, was it? Can't remember. Something, Something like that. that. <laughs> um, and it was great. It was a brilliant piece. And I'm going to give it a nine. A rating of a nine. It was, uh, it was a what a cracker. Oh, it was a brilliant, brilliant piece of music. Today we are back to one of the uh, Opus 7 concertos. Um, uh, this one in G major, RV299. Um, it's the second concerto in book two, which makes it uh, Opus 7 number 8. And um, rather like the other concerto of uh, the Opus 7 that we looked at last week, this one's not by Vivaldi either. I mean, there's no way this is by Vivaldi. Um, here's the first written note. There you go. Um, yeah, no way, no way that in uh, on this earth that, that is by Vivaldi. Um, the opening is is much more sort of Albanonian than than Vivaldi. Uh, there's, in fact, there's a, a G major concerto from Albanoni's Opus Two that that opening reminds me of. A um, few a few reasons why this ain't by Vivaldi. Number one. Okay, number one. Um, going to a sixth chord. Um, so uh, so early on in in the phrase is uh, very very unusual for Vivaldi. Should we continue? Right, this phrase here, da 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 da, in in the in the viola and the bass part. One of the things that makes Vivaldi so brilliant, he is king of the rhythm. Vivaldi is. And uh, he wouldn't, in a month of Sundays, write something so pedestrian as du, 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 du. I mean, you know, you know uh, makes me want to slip my wrists. Um, yeah, so, and then this bit could be by Vivaldi. Right, and then, uh, until you get there, if that was Vivaldi, he might have done this. Hold on. Vivaldi might have done that, but he didn't. He didn't raise the D, he kept them as naturals. And that, in actual fact. And then that, again, is rather Albanonian. Add to the end that when you get to the end of the uh, add to that when you get to the end of the written arrow. There's a uh, there's a sort of a pregnant pause before the soloist comes in. Um, it happens again here. Right, the second written arrow is in the uh, also in the tonic, which is occasionally happens in Vivaldi. It's not it's not normal, but the same thing. <gasps> Yeah, it's, it's a really boring way of writing. Interestingly, um, the slow movement, which in actual fact has more sort of Vivaldian sort of things about it than the fast movements, um, the slow movement survives in a in a concerto that's uh, uh, said to be by Visconti, Gasparo Visconti, um, who was uh, Tartini's teacher. So it's interesting that. Um, uh, that there is actually a part of the concerto survives um, attributed to somebody else. Um, the Opus 7 um, is a funny publication. Um, I, I think that there are several concertos in this um, 
publication that that are not by him because the Amsterdam printers wanted to make a bit of money. If I was Vivaldi, I'd have been a bit cheesed off because uh, you know if uh, somebody sent recordings around the world of a really duff violinist playing saying it was Adrian Chandler I wouldn't be very happy with that anyway uh, we can't ask Vivaldi how he feels about it because he's dead so anyway there you go uh, back next week cheers folks bye